Well, I've hit record again, so I might as well start blabbing. I was gonna snap another picture and say, uh, your humble narrator has the best view of CN Tower, or rather CN Tower has the best view of Toronto, and your humble narrator has the best view of CN Tower. Now I understand and realize that I'm shooting this vertically. I should have held the camera um, horizontally. Not only that, oh my god, talk about vertigo, like obviously we're right smack downtown Toronto and uh, you know just peering over the edge here is the Gartner Expressway or peering over the edge you can see the Gartner Expressway rush hour traffic is beginning to uh, to shape up, I mean let's have a look here what is it, like not even 7 o'clock right, 6.30 in the morning so um, you know, due to the grace of God, I'm at another beautiful site. I've I've got a couple of videos called the joys of security, and uh, you know, I thank God that I I'm educated and whatnot, and uh, professional kind of semi-polished person, and I'll show up for a security job, and they'll land me up at a site like this. Now look at the view here, and we're surrounded on all sides by multi-million-dollar condominiums and businesses and you know PwC and TELUS and Scotia Bank all these guys they're all in walking distance but all of this is irrelevant you see people ask me why do you believe in God right why do you believe in God now the Quran says that God continues to send signs to people that we will send signs inside of you we will send signs at, at, in the universe at large and rejecting those signs is essentially what this belief is. To say I'm a Christian or I'm a Buddhist or I'm Shinto or I'm a Native American, that's not really the essence of what we're talking about. The essence of what we're talking about is an inner feeling of honesty or compassion or truth or justice. Do you follow those things? Those things are self-evident. Now, for me, a sign of God is something like this. In Islam, we have this concept, and it's not just in Islam, rather the Quran says that, so we told the children of Israel, la in shakartum la azidan nakum. If you're grateful, we will increase you, in brackets, in that in which you're grateful. For example, if you're a healthy person, uh, and you say, thank God for my health, or rather, let's say you don't even have a conception of God at large, or that label, or that religion, or whatever, but you're grateful for your health, that gratitude will lead to more health. That's a simple conception of life. You don't need to be religious in order to understand it. However, it's not really a scientific conception. You might say, well, being grateful produces the right kind of uh, psychology or physiology or sentiments or social or so psychosomatic energy or whatever I don't care it doesn't make any difference to me I have faith in the principle the principle works just fine now I recorded another few videos at similar uh, vistas like at a, at a similar location like out in Etobicoke I remember I used to work at a beautiful condo and we'd see CN Tower in the distance and then I thank God for it and lo and behold here I am at another site so a beautiful site an amazing site this is like multi-million dollar access site right you don't get to see views like this as a regular Torontonian but God has blessed me I might be a poor person struggling to be rich and famous one day and <laughs> just like the rest of us now that kind of thing to me is a sign of God. Like, why do you believe in God? There's the logical aspect of it, but I believe as a salesperson that human people, human beings make emotional decisions and then they justify them with logic. So the emotion comes first for most of us, for 99% of us, 99% of the time, you feel something and then you scramble in and rationalize it with logic. I mean, it's not really correct. However, on the other hand, Islam says that you shouldn't believe in God just because you've been told by your parents or let's say, um, you know, what? Like the Quran, let's say, we believe was re revealed by God, but 
Uh, you can't believe in God just because the Quran says so. In fact, you have to rationalize it. You have to think about it inside of your head. So why do I believe in God? I believe in God because of all of the amazing coincidences. Well, there's the rational proofs that are there. There's the basic questions, three questions I've always asked and I'll keep asking because there are no answers to. And the only answer is God. And God is not just being intellectual lazy. It's an explanation for this amazing universe. This amazing universe just didn't come about by itself. So who caused it? And who caused all the laws that govern it? Even the laws of evolution and all of these kinds of things. And now, on the other hand, the second question is, how is it being maintained? You know, the planets don't crash into each other. You've got whole galaxies with billions hundreds of billions of stars systems f floating through each other the sun is moving everything is moving and galaxies move solar systems move through each other and galaxies move through each other and nothing crashes with anything else and you're telling me that it's just a uh, coincidence or something it doesn't make any sense to me obviously there has to be someone or something managing that and then obviously the third question is that of intelligent design. Everything is ordered, right? And order infers design. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. The more you go into it, this, this thing over here has a purpose, right? It's designed and it has a purpose. Somebody put it there for a purpose. You'll say, well, you know, the universe just appears to be designed and blah, blah. I don't care about any of that stuff. Honestly, I've rationalized the existence of God with my head and I feel it with my heart. And then it's born out again and again in life through these serendipities, through these coincidences, through these little little things that happen where you're thinking about something and then you see a guy wearing a t-shirt with what you're thinking print emblazoned on the front and then you see two of those uh, the same night two people in it, like basically okay i'll tell you what it is my buddy <laughs> who works at the desk with me he's an amazing animator he draws he draws comics and he draws professional caliber like Marvel, DC, Caliber, or, or level comics. And I want to write a story for him, and we want to make it big that way. I mean, it's my, obviously, umpteenth uh, attempt at fame and fortune or whatever. I just want to do something great. I have what I feel is a seed of greatness, and I think all of us have a seed of greatness, and you should be trying constantly to accomplish something great. And it takes consistent, persistent effort, and you just need to keep at it. In any case... He has this thing called Red, or this character called Red, which is a modern-day Red Riding Hood. So the scenario is kind of like an, a post-apocalyptic Mad Max-type scenario. And you've got Red, and you've got this lady called Sweets, who's the witch from Hansel and Gretel, and, uh, you know, various things like that. And uh, the wolf, basically, is, is essentially the bad guy. But uh, I'm not sure if the wolf... I guess the wolf is a person... And the wolf is, is basically, um, you know, just trying to take over all of the post-apocalyptic communities and bring them together under his rule. He's like a barren overlord or feudal lord, if you will. In any case, I was thinking about all this stuff and I'm like, listen, man, all this stuff is great. But what I'd really want to write about is a postmodern Canadian superhero. How come we don't have a postmodern Canadian superhero or any Canadian superhero of standing for that matter? Now, he corrected me by saying, because he's a, a aperture or whatever of comics, right? He has his own blogs or YouTube channels, and he goes around interviewing people, and, you know, he's got a lot of stuff on the go. Uh, so he's in the know, let's say. <laughs> so uh, just like I believe I'm in the know of IT, being a, a software, ex-software sales guy, uh, come security officer. <laughs> Anyhow... So he says, uh, well, we have Captain Canuck, right? And I'm like, Captain Canuck? Well, that's interesting. It sounds kind of lame, to be honest with you. Captain Canuck, he's probably some kind of pushover, I'm thinking, in my mind. Way too nice. I'm talking about a gritty kind of uh, James Bond meet Daniel Craig type of persona. In the sense of James Bond used to be this suave, sophisticated guy. And when they cast Daniel Craig for the role, there was a moral outrage. Like, people had websites up. Craig is not Braun.com. Craig is not Bond.com. But now, he's proved himself through and through. Like, over the course of 10 years, and three or four or whatever 
the, of the best, uh, most grossing James Bond movies. And what it, what occurred to the producers, uh, you know, uh, I guess there was Broccoli and then his daughter now is a producer. I forget everyone's name, obviously. But, um, you know, they realized that the hero of today should be some kind of gritty postmodern kind of guy. And uh, that's the kind of superhero I want to create. Now, his name might be kind of cheesy. We might call him Captain Canadia. And then the first box of, of, the, of the first comic is called, you know, it just has a speech bubble saying, what kind of stupid name is Captain Canadia? And the guy answers, well, I was going to call myself something. I might as well call myself anything. It doesn't really make a difference, does it? You're still going to jail, Buster, or something like that. Or you're still going down, Buster, or whatever it is. But I had this conversation with Sean, and the very next day, or the very same day, two, not one, but two people walked into my lobby with Superman t-shirts on. Just the S symbol, right? One, and then later, like one person walked in and it struck me, wow, that's odd. Like, who wears a Superman S logo? It's like kind of cheesy or corny. And then lo and behold, a few minutes later, another one walks in. So that kind of thing. Now imagine that kind of thing happens to you 12, 15, or 17 times a day. Anyway, I gotta go. I hope I don't get in trouble or fired for this. Take care. And uh, yeah, that's why I believe in God. Come visit Toronto and security rules and soda sales and sodas being nice to people. And that's what you should be doing. Be nice. Be nice. Just be nice. Just be nice. All right, folks. Over and out.